Okay, let's get started. We are going to cover 7.1 and 7.2 today. And I will move 7.3 and 7.4 that are actually in your week 12 folder right now. I'm going to move those to week 13 and we'll do those next week. So we're just going to do 7.1 and 7.2. I'll change the due dates in my lab so it won't be due this Sunday. Seven, so what will we do this Sunday will be your chapter six review, your chapter six test, and then 7.1 and 7.2, which is what we're going to do today. Okay, so the first couple of problems are going to give us an expression and then ask us to replace the X with different numbers. So on number one, <clears throat> it's going to give us this expression 8X minus 2 over 7X and then ask us to replace it with X equals 2 and then when X equals negative 3. Okay, so it's like two problems in one. So the first thing we're going to do where x equals 2 is go through all the problems. And wherever you see that x, you're going to put a 2. So let's see what that gives me. I have 8 times 2 minus 2 in the numerator. And then in the bottom, I'll have seven times two. Okay, so if I plug in the twos and then do the math that you see, let's see up here at the top, I have eight times two, which is 16 minus two. In the bottom, seven times two gives me 14. And then finish it up by 16 minus two is 14, still over 14, which reduces to positive one. Okay, same problem, but this time it wants me to replace the x's this time with negative three. So when x equals negative three, I'm gonna go through everywhere I put twos and put negative threes, right? It's the same problem. I'm just replacing the x's with negative threes now. Now, let's see what this math does. Let's see, eight times negative three gives me negative 24. Bring down the minus two. Over seven times negative three is negative 21. Then do the math. Let's see, negative 24 minus tw two, excuse me. Negative 24 minus two gives me negative 26. Bring over the negative 21. Now remember, anytime you want to reduce a fraction in your calculator, you can do that with the math inner inner function function. So if I have negative 26, so negative 26 divided by negative 21. I'm trying to get the light right. There. So there's your fraction, I mean your decimal. So let's math enter, enter that. So math, hit your math button, then hit enter twice. And you'll notice what did it do since it, it <clears throat> reduced it, which it was already in lowest terms, but it turned it positive, right? Because you had a negative over a negative. So let's see. This right here just turns to positive 26 over 21. Okay, let's look at number two. Number two is the same kind of problem. It's in parentheses, negative 2x squared. Over 5x plus 15. And it wants us to use the same numbers again. It wants us to do two and then negative three. I'm going to do both of these. Do the twos 
first. Again, replacing this x with a 2. So in parentheses, I'll have negative 2 times 2 squared over 5 times 2 plus 15. So let's see. What, remember, you need to do what's inside these parentheses first. So I have negative 2 times 2, which gives me negative 4 squared. Over 5 times 2 gives me 10 plus 15. Let's see, what does negative 4 squared mean to do? If you do that in your calculator, you better put those parentheses around that negative 4. If you don't, it's going to tell you the wrong thing. Okay? Negative 4 squared means negative 4 times itself, which is positive 16. And then in the denominator, you have 10 plus 15, which is? 25 and that will not reduce if you put that in your calculator and math enter enter it it will still tell you 16 over 25 because that does not reduce oh i didn't mean to erase all of it i still got to do negative three right same problem negative three Negative 2x in parentheses squared over 5x plus 15. Plus 15. And now I'm doing it when x equals negative 3. I'm replacing the x with negative 3 this time. So in parentheses, I'll have negative 2 times negative 3 squared over, replacing this x with negative 3. So 5 times negative 3 plus 15. Negative 2 times negative 3 gives me positive 6 squared. In the denominator, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Bring over the plus 15. So here, I have 6 squared, which gives me 36. Look what happens in your denominator, though. What is negative 15 plus 15? It is 0. And what is it when your denominator of your fraction equals a zero? That is undefined. You can't have it, you can't divide by zero. That is undefined. All right, number three is the same kind of problem. We're doing two and negative three again. Let's see what it wants us to plug into this time. 11x plus four over two x squared. Plus 26x plus 44. And again, we are doing two and negative three. So let's do two first. So x equals two. Everywhere you see an x, you're going to put a two. So here, here, and here, three spots. So let's see, I'll have 11 times two plus four in the numerator. In the denominator, I'll have 2 times 2 squared plus 26 times 2 plus 44. All right, let's work in the top first. Let's see, up top, I have 11 times 2, which is 22. Bring over the plus 4, which gives me 26. Top's not too bad. 
Now, let's look at the bottom here. I got more work and I need to remember my order of operations right here. Here I have multiplication and an exponent. We need to remember that that exponent needs to come first. Hey, this right here needs to come first. So I have two squared, which is four. So now I have two times four. Bring over the plus 26 times two plus 44. So two times four gives me eight. Plus 26 times 2 is 52, plus 44. And then I'll add straight across. Let's see, 8 plus 52 gives me, what is that? That would give me 60, and then plus 44. So when you add the 60 and the 44 together, you get 104. Now, I don't want to have to deal with reducing that on my own, right? I can make my calculator do that with your math inner inner function. So again, 26 divided by 104. I don't know what's wrong with my lights today, but there. And then math inner inner that. And you'll see that that will reduce to, looks like one fourth. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna replace all the X's this time with negative three. So everywhere we see an X, we're gonna put a negative three. So let's see, up top I have 11 times negative three plus four over two times negative three squared plus 26 times negative three plus 44. Now, you can even do a lot of this just straight in your calculator. Like if I type, and think of it as two separate columns, the top and then the bottom. If I type this exactly like that is in my calculator, it'll do the math for me, right? So I'll do 11, open parentheses, negative 3, close, plus 4. So try that in your calculator. 11. Open parentheses. Oh. Open parentheses, negative three, closed. What is it? Plus four. Hit enter. So the top will be negative 29. The denominator is really where that's going to be beneficial, right? I can type it in exactly like that denominator is. So let's see, I need two, open parentheses, negative three, closed. Then what do I need after that? This is squared. Well, you can even hit this X squared button right here. That'll put a squared up there for you and then even go back down. Then what do I need? Plus 26. So plus 26, open parentheses, negative three, closed plus 44, hit enter, negative 16. So it does all that math for you. So now I have negative 29 over negative 16, so make it do that too. So negative 29 divided by negative 16, and then math enter, enter it. So what did it do? It just changed it to positive, right? Because you had a negative over a negative. It didn't reduce, but since you had a negative over a negative, it turned to positive, 29 over 16. Okay, now let's look at number four. Here's where we're getting into something a little bit different. It's gonna, the next few problems are gonna say, find all numbers for which the rational expression is 
undefined. So let's think about rational expression is just a fancy way to say fraction. So let's think about what makes a fraction undefined is when the denominator is zero. Okay, so let's think about this on these next few problems. So I have 10 over 19x. And I want to know what makes this undefined? The number for which the rational expression is undefined is blank. So what we need to do is I don't care about the numerator at all. It has nothing to do with making that fraction undefined. The only thing that does is the denominator. So whatever the denominator is, set it equal to zero and solve it for x. How do I get the x by itself here? Divide by 19. So those 19s cancel. So now I'm left with x equals 0 over 19 and 0 over anything is 0. So 0 is the number that would make this fraction undefined, right? If I put a 0 in this x spot, what would happen? Uh, it would be 0, right? I'd have 10 over 19 times zero, which is zero, which is what? Undefined. So zero is what makes that one undefined. Okay, let's look at the next one. Does it work right? Was it free? Wow. So here's the next one, number six. What makes, or five, excuse me. What makes this one undefined? So let's see, what is the number, I mean, excuse me, the denominator? Z minus nine. Let's see what makes that equal zero. So if I solve this one for Z, what needs to happen? What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. So Z equals what? Nine. nine, that is the number that would make that undefined, right? If you put a nine right here in this Z spot, what would you have in the bottom? Nine minus nine, nine. which is zero, which is what you can't have. So nine is what would make that one undefined. All right now let's look at number six. You have x squared over 5x plus 6. So again, I don't care about the top. I only care about the denominator. So 5x plus 6, set it up equal to 0 and solve it. So let's see, if I solve this one, that means get rid of my plus six with a minus six. So five X equals negative six. Divide by five. So negative six plus five. So negative six. Math enter, enter. Negative six over five, right? All right, number seven on the worksheet, if you're following along on the handout that's in the week 12 folder, that problem is actually not in your homework. It will say that your instructor already gave you credit for it. It has something in there that we haven't learned and are not going to learn. So, <clears throat> I've taken number seven out of your homework. So let's go to number eight. You have y squared minus eight y over, sorry, I can't read it, six. Now, look at this denominator. 
it wants to know what would make that fraction undefined or what would make that fraction turn to zero in the denominator. What do you have to have in that denominator to plug stuff into that you don't have in this one? A letter. A variable. That's what you have to have in the denominator to plug numbers into to change what this denominator is. It doesn't matter what you're putting in these Y's, the, the, this, this stuff up here is gonna change all the time depending on what you put in for Y, but it doesn't matter. What's gonna be the denominator every single time? It's gonna stay six, right? There's not a Y to plug in there to down there that's gonna change that, okay? Which means <clears throat> this right here, there is nothing that's gonna make it undefined. Nothing's gonna turn that denominator into a zero because it's gonna always be six. Now, I also took out number nine for the same reason I took out number seven. So there's no seven and there's no nine. We're going to 10. It looks like the rest of these are saying, write the expression in lowest terms or simplify the expression. Those mean the same exact thing, okay? So let's look at number 10. This is seven one. You have 8x to the 6 over 2x. So you're just reducing or writing in simplest terms. So the rule is you do the top divided by the bottom. If there's any factoring to be done, you're going to do that first. Okay? If there was factoring to be done, you would see it. First of all, there would be a plus or minus in the top or bottom. Right, because what happens? What does this mean you're doing? Eight divided by two. What are you doing with these exponents right here? You're subtracting them. Good. You have x to the six over x to the first, which means you're subtracting those exponents to get x to the fifth. All right, number 11, you have t plus nine times t minus nine. Over t plus nine squared. Oh, what they did was they did. So let's rewrite the bottom. What does t plus nine squared mean? It means t plus nine, t plus nine. So let's write it like that. So t plus nine, t minus nine over. T plus nine, T plus nine. So all I did was change the T plus nine squared into T plus nine twice. So now that I have it written out like that, if you have a factor in the top that is the same as a factor in the bottom, they'll cancel each other, right? What is T plus nine? It's not undefined. What's this turned into? What is this? If you have something over itself, not zero. Uh, one. One, right? Mm -hmm. So what is left in the top once that canceled that? You have t minus nine over t plus nine. Now those t's do not cancel because they're not factors. It's not, you, you're only a factor is if you're multiplied times something. That's why on the previous problem, when you had 8x to the 6 over 2x, that's why those you could work with because they are factors. What does this say? 8 times x, 2 times x. You have to be multiplied with something to be a factor, to be able to divide and cancel out like that. Okay, let's look at the next one. Number 12, you have 3y plus 21 over 2y plus 14. Now, this is where all that work that you did in chapter six is gonna come in to play. 
So this is, I need to, anytime I'm simplifying rational expressions, if there is some factoring to be done, you've got to factor first in the numerator and the denominator. So looking just at the numerator, the first thing you're always gonna look for is something in common. Is there a number that goes into three and 21? What goes into both of them? Or three. Three does. That means you gotta pull it out. What do you do after you pull out the three? You're gonna put in parentheses what's left. How do you find what is left? You're gonna divide both of these by three. So if I divide this by three, what's left? Y. This is the Y plus. If I divide this by three, what is left? So let's do the same thing in the bottom. What's in common here? So I'm going to pull out a two. And then you plus y. If I divide this by two, I'm left with y. And then plus, if I divide this by two. And no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Look what you got. Y plus seven over y plus seven cancels. Mm -hmm. So what are you left with? Three, three over. over. Same thing. So we will put three over two. That's your answer. Three over two is what you would put in. Yep, just three over two. Okay. So same thing. Look at the top and the bottom separately. Look at the top. Is there um, is there something in common? Five. Yep, that's right. So a whole lot of five. Minus five. Right. If I divide this by five, I'm just left with the B. Minus. If I divide this by five, I'm left with five. Same thing in the bottom. What's in common? Oh, no, well, seven is what goes into both of them. Oh, yeah. And then B. If I divide this by seven, I just have the B. Minus. Minus 35 divided by seven gives me five. five. What happens to those B minus fives? They canceled out. They canceled out. So what's left in the top? Five. Just the five. What's left in the bottom? Seven. Number 14, m squared minus n squared over m plus n. So again, just looking at the top, nothing's in common, so it's not like the last one. No. But look, what are both of these? They're both squared, right? And there's a minus in the middle. That was that very last kind of factoring that we talked about, the difference of perfect squares. So if I have the difference of perfect squares, I can factor this. What needs to go here and here to get M squared? There's only one way to get M squared. M and M. What needs to go here and here mm. ends, right? To get the n squared. When you're doing a difference of perfect squares like this, your signs are always mm. plus and minus. It doesn't matter where the plus and minus go, you just have to have one of each. Looking at the bottom, can you do anything with m plus n? I can't pull anything out, nothing's squared. So it stays the same. It stays the same. 
And look. They cancel out. They cancel out. So, so what's left? M minus N. M minus N. Tricky. So looking at the top, first thing you're looking for is something in common. What goes into 80 and 5? There's only one thing that goes into 5. 5. Does that go also go into 80? It does. Anything that ends in a 0 or a 5, 5 goes into it. So let's see, if I pull out a five in your calculator, 80 divided by five would give me 16. I still have the M squared minus five divided by five leaves me with one. Look at this, what's in common here? What goes into both of those? My only option is three, because three is the only thing that goes into three. Does three go into 12? Yeah. Yep, then I can pull out a three. If I divide this by three, what is going to be left? 4m minus, if I divide three by three, I'm left with one. So it looks like right now nothing's going to cancel. Look at this numerator, though. What's inside here is actually a difference of perfect squares because what is the same number that you can multiply together to get 16? Not, not eight times eight, no, but you gotta multiply. Four and four, four times four. MM mm -hmm. gives you M squared. What's the same number that you can multiply together to get one? How do you multiply to get one? One times one. So this is a difference of perfect squares. So I'm going to rewrite this top. I'm just going to bring down the five. Again, what do we multiply together to get 16 m squared? I would need four m, four m. What's going to multiply together to give you one? One and one. What are your signs always with a difference of squares? One. Plus and one, minus. and one minus. I can't do anything else in the bottom, so I'll just bring down the three and the four m minus one. So who cancels now? The four m minus one. Right. So all that's left in the top is the five and the four m plus one. And what's all that's left in the bottom? Three. All right, number sixteen. Twenty five A squared minus four B squared. over 25A minus 10B. So these look similar in top and bottom, but they're actually worked very differently. In the top, first thing I look for is something in common. Is there anything that goes into 25 and four? There's not anything that goes into 25 and four. This has A's, this has B's which means they don't have anything in common. What I do notice though, is that what can you, what's the same number you can multiply together to get 25? Five and five. 
AA to get A squared. What's the same number you multiply to get four? Two, B and B with a minus. So that is a difference of squares. So let's see, you pretty much just gave me the answer. How do you multiply to get 25 A squared? What needs to go here and here? All right. 5A, 5A. Plus and minus on the both sides. Plus and minus. And then it's going to be 2B. And 2B. 2B, 2B. Okay. I think we need to come to class. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the last day we can come to class. But we could always, and I'm saying this while I'm recording, I'm going to be live zooming from home, just like I am live zooming from this classroom. I'm going to be doing the same thing if you want to set up a personal live Zoom for me to help you with homework or anything, send me an email. We will set up a personal live Zoom, just me and you. Okay, now looking at the bottom, again, look for what's in common first. Is there a number that goes into 25 and 10? Five. five. You can pull something out of the bottom. So if you pull out a five, what's going to be left here if you divide this by five? Five A. Minus, what if you divide this by five, what's left? Two B. And nothing cancels out. Are you sure? Look yeah, at the, yeah, it do cancel out. What but cancels? The five A minus five A minus two B cancels. So it's going to be five A plus two B over five A plus two B over five. five. All right. Let's look at seventeen. Bust out your calculators. Uh, 15x squared plus 32x plus 16. I said a lot. Oh, I forgot even what I said. 32x plus 16. Ooh. Over 15x squared minus 8x minus 16. Is there anything that goes into 15, 32, and 16? Let's think about the numbers that will go into 15. First of all, 15. Mm -hmm. Does 15 go into 32 or 16? No. No. What else goes into 15? Um, 5? Yes. Does 5 go into 32? Yes. Does 32 end in 0 or 5? No. If you don't end in 0 or 5, 5 doesn't go into you. No. So if five doesn't work, what about three? Three doesn't go into any of those either. So there's not anything that goes into all of them. So this is one of those. Uh, this is probably what you're having trouble with in chapter six is problems like this kind of factoring. So this is going to be, since it's three terms, there's a number in front of X squared. That's the long type of factoring. So let's see, the first thing I need to do, this is why you're gonna to wanna to get your calculators out, because you're gonna multiply these outside numbers together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all the work down here. Now remember, after I get done factoring this, it's gonna end up in two parentheses like that. So once I do the work for this, I'm gonna put it up here, the answers. Okay. Okay, to keep it kind of straight. So let's see, when I multiply five, or excuse me, 15 times positive 16, you're right, it gives me positive 240. So these are the ones where we made our little T charts. This is the number that you're gonna put in your Y equals. That's right, so go to your Y equals, make sure it's all cleared out. Put in the 240. 
Then you're going to put divided by and then put the X. Now you're going to go down to the next Y. So what are you going to put in this Y2? You're going to put the same thing, another 240 divided by X. And then plus X, right? Now you want to see the table, so you're going to hit second table. Now, what you're going to, you're going to be looking in this very last column over here, always for this middle number. So what am I looking for? 32. So let's go down until I see 32. In the last, I'm looking in this column right here. 34. There's my 32. Yes, you're exactly right. That's what I'm going to use is the 12 and 20, both positives. We be writing our stuff to be That's fine. Did you put 20 and 12 here? 20 here, 12 there, mm -hmm. which is totally fine. What do I put them both over? 15. 15x. That's right. Math, math, enter, enter, both of those fractions. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, you know what you're doing. Well, I looked at the video about 50 times. <laughs> Question. So 12 divided by 15. Let's see what does that give me? Enter. So math enter, enter that decimal. So what does that reduce to? Four fifths. But I think I'd be writing me wrong. Then 20 divided by 15. 20 divided by 15 gives me 1.3333. So math, enter, enter. Which gives me four thirds. So remember, that's where your factors come from. So 5x plus 4. 5x plus 4. And 3x plus 4. 3x plus 4. Now, what did I say I was going to do once I did the work? I was going to put my answers. So right, that's what this right here, when you factor it, it turns into this. So that's what I want to put right there. 5x plus 4, 3x plus 4. If your 3x plus 4 is first and your 5x plus 4 is second, that's totally fine. I think that's terrible. Oh, I'll have to look at it. Okay, so you're going to put the So there's the top. I got to do the same thing to the bottom now, right? Be careful with your signs. What is this one's outside when I multiply it together? 15 times negative. negative 16, which is going to give me negative 240, right? Mm -hmm. So now, what am I putting in y equals? I put in negative 240, which is going to give me different stuff. So go to y equals, take out that positive 240, and enter negative 240 divided by x. Negative 240 divided by x plus x. Second table. Now what are you looking for? Negative on the top of negative 8. You're looking for negative 8 in that last column. So when I look at mine, there's my negative eight. Who makes negative eight? Negative 20, positive 12. Doesn't matter which way you put them, as long as you have a negative 20 and a positive 12. Put them both over 15X. Math enter, enter both of those. So let's see, what does tw negative 20 over 15 turn into when you math enter, enter that? It's going to turn into negative four, four thirds. Four thirds. Probably the same as this one, just negative. What did 12 over 15 reduce to? Four fifths. That's where your factors come from. So three x minus four. Three x minus four. Over 5x plus, plus, plus 4. Where does that need to go? At the bottom, At the bottom of this. So 3x minus 4. The number, the denominator. Denominator. 5x plus 4. Do you have a same factor in top and bottom? 
This is a 5x plus 4. And that's a 5x plus 4. That's right. 3x plus 4 over 3x minus 4. All right, last one of this section. I think. Yep, 18. Of xw plus 2x minus 4w minus 8. I already forgot what I said. Minus 4w minus 8. Over xw plus 2x plus 5w plus 10. So looking at the top and the bottom separately, right? You don't, you can't just start off by canceling stuff. You can't cancel until you have factored everywhere you can factor, okay? You can't just start off canceling. You have to factor first. So looking at the top, first thing I'm ignoring this right now. I look all the way across to see if there's anything I can pull out, but this one only has a one. So I can't pull out any number. Do they all have W? No, no. Do they all have X? No. No. So there's nothing I can pull out. So what happens when you have four terms, but there's not anything in common? That's when you group. So we write grouping. So let's see. After you do grouping, you're going to end up with the same kind of answers. You're going to end up with two parentheses again. So I'm going to do the work here. Put my answer here. So let's see, looking in your first little small group, what's in common? What do these terms both have? Oh, eight, pull out an X then. Put in parentheses what's left. If I pull out an X from both of these, what is left? W plus two. W plus two. Now remember, now you're going to go to that second group. You're going to pull something out. And remember, what do you want to be left in its parentheses? The same thing. So let's see what I can. There's some number I can pull out here. Most of the time, if this first term is negative, you're going to pull out a negative. What is the biggest number that goes into four and eight? The biggest number, four. So pull out a negative four, which means and again, if you can write it in there real small. So, so W minus, no, not minus, plus. Because you have a negative, you pulled out a negative, uh, right? So, so it's going to be W plus two. plus two again. These are the same. So that's one of your factors, W plus two. What, where did your other factor come from? The two things four that you're eight. X and negative four. Eight. That's right. X minus four. So the same thing is this one. The other parenthesis is those two terms. So I'm done with that work. Where, where does that need to be? That's the top, right? W plus two, X minus four. Same thing's gonna happen in the bottom, right? Because it's also the same kind of factoring because there's four terms with nothing in common. So I'm going to group them again. So first group, what's in common? What do these both have? Eight. Pull out an X. I'm going to erase that. Eight. 
I'm gonna pull out an X. If you take the X out of both of these, what's gonna be left? W plus two. W plus two. What are you gonna pull out of that second group? Positive five. Positive five. You divide those both by positive five. What's gonna be left here? Is W plus five. No, not plus five. What's 10 divided by five? 10 divided by five, two. Take two, two, two. Five. So what's one of your parentheses gonna be? The same thing? Yep, the same thing you did with five. Not five X. This plus this. X. So see? No, not no, just X. This these two things are going to be two separate terms in your second parentheses. So this oh. is going to be X plus five. Plus five. Okay, okay. Yep, That's yep, yep. Oh no. So let's see. What is going? Where does this go? At the bottom, right? The bottom. <laughs> w plus two, x plus five. So since those, what's going to cancel here? Um, the w plus two. So what are you going to be left with after the w plus two is canceled? X minus four over x plus five, and that's actually all we're going to do today. I thought I was going to get 17 in, but we just don't have time to start to do a whole other section. And it's a biggie. So I'm going to do that on Tuesday of next week. So I'll move. So the only thing to do this Sunday, and I'll change it all in Math Lab and the course folder, is Chapter 6 Review, Chapter 6 Test, 7 1.